They're all lying. They say, what about horse evolution? Yes, boys and girls, you see this? The four-toed horse evolved to the one-toed horse. That's a lie proven wrong 55 years ago. The hyrax is the so-called four-toed horse. They're still alive today in Africa and, and Turkey. <laughs> There's still a little bitty critter. There's one right there, a hyrax. They don't tell you the early horse had 18 pairs of ribs. The next one had 15. These animals are not even related. They just picked some bones and put them in order they wanted them. The next one had 19 and then back to 18. This horse evolution theory was proven wrong a long time ago. There's a whole variety of horses today, by the way, big ones and little ones. But back in 1950, G.G. Simpson, a famous evolutionist, said, this horse evolution was unintentionally falsified. It's not true. The evolution of the horse was all wrong. It never happened in nature. They've, horse evolution has not held up under close examination. The whole idea was made up by Othniel Marsh back in 1874. He picked animals from all over the world and put them in order the way he wanted it to happen. He never found them in that order, okay? Modern horses are found in the same layers as the so-called ancient horse. The ancient horse is just an animal still alive today in Turkey and East Africa. The ribs, toes, and teeth are different. In South America, the fossils are in the reverse order. Real problem. They're never found in the order presented in the textbooks. Tulsa Zoo finally took out their display because a friend of mine wrote him a letter and said, Hey, uh, why do you have the horse evolution on display? I've got the letters here somewhere. Did you get those out, Steve? The, they're in the suitcase? Okay. You can come read those later. He wrote him a letter and said, Guys, your horse evolution thing was proven wrong like uh, 50 years ago. You know, would you please remove the display? And they said, We don't have the funding to remove it. So he went to a sign shop and got a bid for a sign, 60 bucks or something, that says, we'll take this, the sign would say, we will take down this display as soon as we receive the funding, because the display is not accurate. He went into the curator at the zoo and said, uh, here's 60 bucks for the sign, this guy will make the sign, when would you like it delivered? He said, what's this? Oh, you're going to take down, the, we're going to take down the display when we get the funding. Yeah, he said, you at least warn the people, you know, the display is not right. Well, they didn't take it down. Finally, I forget, 2,000 people signed a petition saying, get this thing out of our zoo. It came on the evening news, 10 o'clock one night. Tulsa Zoo has a false display. Next morning, it was gone. They found the funding. Six months later, they put it back up. Yale University still has their horse evolution on display, proven wrong 55 years ago. Get more on the horse evolution in the book, Icons of Evolution. Just because you can arrange animals in order, that doesn't prove anything. Even if you find them buried in a certain order, that doesn't prove anything. If I get buried on top of a hamster, does that prove he's my grandpa? <laughs> no. Order of burial means nothing. But if you think you can arrange things and that somehow proves something, okay. I've been doing a lot of research on the evolution of the fork. I've pieced together fragmentary evidence for a long time. I believe, after studying this very intently, that the knife evolved first. Slowly, over millions of years, great geological pressures squeezed it and made it concave on one side, convex on the other, and squeezed it into a spoon. And then slowly, erosion cut grooves into the end and turned it into a fork. I knew I was onto something here, but I felt like I had a missing link, particularly between the spoon and the fork. I just couldn't find it. Till one day I was flying to Connecticut on U.S. Air. I was 30,000 feet off the ground, and the stewardess walked down the aisle and just handed me the missing link. I don't think she knew what she had, but my trained scientific eye picked it up right away. I said, wow, this is it. I've got it. I stuck it in my pocket. Later that day, I went to Popeye's Chicken and found another one. <laughs> there they are, folks, the missing links. So the evolution of silverware is nearly complete. Of course, we got a few mutants, mutants along the way, didn't quite survive for some reason, you know. And of course, people found out I was doing research on this. They all wanted to be famous, you know. So they tried to get in on the glory. They sent me their research. This one was an obvious fork head on a spoon handle. I mean, look, it didn't get by me. I caught it right away, you know. They don't get stuff, I don't, get, I don't fall for stuff like that. Even the races, of course, evolved over the long ways. But uh, look, if you want to arrange things, you can turn a cat to a cot to a dot to a dog by changing one letter at a time. You can play with this for a while, turn yourself into a fool when you're done. 